Hey, did you know you can go to ColinMullen.com in order to get art and art prints? It's the way I always talk about this. I should probably come up with a different way of saying it, but that way works. You could get gifts. Father's Day's coming. You could get them something. ColinMullen.com So hey, everybody. Um, real quick, I'm going to talk about this one because it leads into what I'm talking about today, which I, I feel like I already talked about, but then I looked through my old videos and... For the life of me, I could not find it. If I've already talked about this, I'm sorry. It's definitely the mood of the day. Um, so I'm not sure which of the two paintings I'm going to put up uh, into this. Um, the reason I only do one uh, video every other week is because occasionally I just have bad weeks. and um, Or I try something that's a little outside of my comfort zone and it doesn't go well. And uh, that's what happened with the pink one. I don't know if that's the one that will be in this video. But... Um, Let's talk about that. Um, I think that there is a huge benefit um, outside of like digital. Well, outside of like the, the cost, the physical cost it is to do art um, like paint or brushes or canvas to finish what you start as much as possible. Um, it's, it's good for you um, to experiment and try things outside of your comfort zone. And that's kind of what happened with the pink one. Um, it won't go up for sale, but it's good for me to see things go wrong, you know? I'm not a huge fan of the color pink, but I saw this um, weirdly aesthetic, like, one of those toys that you get at, if you, like, win enough arcade tickets. Someone, tr like, took a really aesthetic photo of that, and I was like, that's neat. I want to do that, but with a hand, because I think that would be cool. And, um... So I tried it, and it didn't turn out right. I couldn't get the colors the way I wanted. Um, the composition wasn't the way I really envisioned, and so it didn't come out good. But I went ahead and finished it because um, I noticed that, at least for me, and maybe you're the same way, um, there's a certain break point. Like, the first couple of seconds, the first few minutes of a drawing or painting, I feel confident in it. I'm happy about it. But then, as soon as I start to get to the part, right before I start adding details, when I'm doing the base coat, I notice that a lot of it looks awful, and I hate it. That's part of the base coat, is it just looks bad. And so, um, that kind of happened with this one. But I stuck it out, I went on through, I pushed through, and it ended up being awful. But, you know what? I learned that that combination isn't going to work the way that I thought it would. And there's some value to that. And I think, regardless, I learned something about myself. I learned something about my skill level. I learned something about uh, what colors I think look good together. Because I see a lot of people who will inadvertently just stick to the same thing. Um, continuously making the same style, same stuff, same color palette. So it kind of all seems the same. And from an economic standpoint, that's actually really good. But from a... Um, I guess spiritual standpoint like I, I find that really dull um so I constantly want to be trying to do new things because there's going to be a point where I just hate doing paintings and um I won't have the motivation to continue with it and so the best thing for me is to continue to try and do new things and that's kind of what this video is about um is that you should try new things and you should fail don't set out to fail, but do stuff that is outside your comfort zone, outside of what you think is good, uh, if you get the inspiration to do so, and give it a go. Because the worst that happens is that you waste a little bit of paint, and you go, that was a bad idea, you know? Um, but I feel like you waste a lot more not having pushed yourself by making the same stuff over and over again. I realize that I don't like this. There's value to that, you know? Um, there's value to knowing what I like aesthetically. That's a lot of what being an artist is. And so I, I would encourage you, I guess the takeaway from this is to go and do something outside of your comfort zone and outside of what you think is um, possible for you and your style and your quality. And maybe you come up with something cool. Maybe you do something that's better than you expected. Maybe it does work out. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, let me thank the people on Patreon because they are the people that make the gears spin. And um, 
make me go, okay, but no, I really need, I, I need to sit down and paint. Um, having you guys support me, uh, lights a fire under me and makes me go, okay, but no, really. Not tomorrow, today, I'm going to try and put paint on canvas. So let's thank those people, starting with Wapfu. Thank you, Wapfu. Uh, thank you, Theodore Corbier. Thank you, Spiral. Thank you, Spencer Kane. Thank you, Flanixia Theoran. Thank you, Ovus Kirby. Thank you, Moodles. Thank you, Micah. Thank you, Maliciousness. Thank you, Geisazan. Thank you, Duxu. Thank you, Bubba Fair. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Amber. And thank you, Adam Kearney. Um, if you want to be in the credits, just $5 or more at patreon.com slash revscarecrow. Um, if you do $10 or more, you'll be in the credits. And uh, if you want, I'll do critiques of your art. Um, and you just tell me, like, hey, here's an email. Tell me if this is good or not, and then I'll tell you. Uh, anyway, all the rest of that stuff is on Patreon. I'm not uh, of the opinion that I like to sign stuff that is bad, so I didn't go through with signing this one, but uh, thank you um, for watching, and thank you for enjoying it. If you did, go ahead and give me a sub. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.